The Thunder evening the series with the Spurs last night. Kevin Durant had a career high in the playoffs, 41 points. He outscored the entire Spurs team in the fourth quarter by himself. And it's no secret, of course, that he could be a free agent. He will be a free agent and potentially leave OKC this summer. Stephen A., could this performance keep him there, though? No. Um, if he wants to leave, he's going to leave. If he wants to stay, he's going to stay. Now, obviously, how you perform in these, how your team performs in these playoffs, that's your, of your primary concern of your Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is not going to be but so worried about his own performance. He knows what he has to do. But how he performs is not going to dictate whether he decides to stay or leave. It's how the folks around him perform that may ultimately influence his decision to stay or go. It's not just about Russell Westbrook. It's about the other personnel you have behind you. It's about Billy Donovan and how he continues to, to grow and, and go through the maturation process of, of being a new head coach for the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's about Sam Presti um, and his ability to continue to build this roster to championship level. I mean, I think he's done a fabulous job. You know, he may have made some mistakes along the way. Nobody's perfect, but I think Sam Presti is a pretty damn good executive. He's proven himself to be just that. It's just that San Antonio and Golden State, with all the talk being about them you have to do something to eclipse that uh so kevin durant doesn't feel lost in the shuffle now he has something to do with that as well because he is on the court he does have russell westbrook as a sidekick he is one of the top three players in the world we all know what he brings to the table i mean this is kevin durant that we're talking about here skip i'm just looking at some of these numbers man let me go back to 2009 skip 2009 to the present 30 points a game 27.7 28 28 32 25 28.2 this year. And the lowest in those last six to seven years, which is 25 points per game last year, that was only because he had only played 27 games because of that foot injury. So with a bad foot and all, he still averaged 25 on 51% shooting. And during that same time span, he shot 47, 46, 49, 51, 50, 51, and 50% from the field all of those years. This dude is on another level offensively. He's the real deal so i don't think it's about his performance because he ain't doing anything other than what we expect and he ain't doing anything other than what we've grown accustomed to seeing him do because he's that great of an offensive weapon i think what's going to determine the future of kevin durant is him looking at okc the market it is in him having as making a decision as it pertains to his personal aspirations in terms of his own marketability because people like LeBron and others are in his ear about the business of basketball and how he should go about maximizing his business potential. That's going to be one element. The other element, obviously, is going to be how the, play, how the people around him perform. Not him. I got you. I don't want to read too much into what happened last night, but as you well know, Kim, Kevin Durant's a smart guy, has good historical perspective. He knew full well when he stepped on the floor for last night's game, could have been his last hurrah in Oklahoma City. Could have been. If they couldn't get it done last night, then they'd go to San Antonio and face a closeout game, and who knows what would happen in that. I, I know enough people who know Kevin to tell you he, he's emotional, big-hearted, and I will bet you he went home after last night's game and thought twice about it. My, my gut feeling has been from the start, he will leave. But last night, that was such a great finish to that game, such a great moment, such a warm moment for Kevin and those fans. As he said after the game, I've never heard it louder here. I think Kevin, this is just my, maybe you could call it educated guess, I think he went home and started thinking, Gee, wouldn't it be great if I could stay here? Wouldn't it be great if it worked like that all the time? And now we're back to, can he and Russell coexist? And I thought Russell went more out of his way this whole season to coexist better with Kevin. And during the regular season, as obviously Russell got more conscious of passing the basketball, in part because he got more conscious of triple doubles, his new favorite stat, that during the regular season, Kevin was able to average 19.2 shots a game to Russell's 18 shots a game. You, you read a bunch of stats from years past. I can show you several of those years in which Russell Westbrook took more shots during those regular seasons than Kevin did. Going into last night's playoff game, during the playoffs, Russell had taken more shots to date than Kevin had. 
That switched last night because, as you know, it was 25 to 18 Kevin. So for the playoffs, Kevin now has six more attempts than Russell does. But Russell's a high-volume shooter for a point guard. We know that. But last night, it was, it was Kevin's turn, and Russell went out of his way, as you so perfectly pointed out to open the show. He said, here, it's your turn, it's your game, it's your night. And did, whew, did Kevin Durant ever rise and shine? That was a nuclear performance that he is highly capable of having consistently for that team. But will it continue? Because I, I know for a fact Kevin was not the happiest camper after game three. Do you remember the end of game three? Remember the last big possession when Oklahoma City had a chance to make a shot? To get, I forget what the score was exactly there, but they had a timeout call, and Billy Donovan called a play for Russell. Remember, it was the, long, it, it was the one where it went too long. They took like 13 seconds, and yep. finally waiters just threw one up and it banked in. Remember that shot? They, they needed yep. a three. They ran the play for Russell. And would, would Kevin love that? I don't know. I doubt he loved it. But my point is, last night, was, it was beautiful to watch. It, it, was, it was symbiotic. It worked. There was flow between the two co-stars. Russell didn't make a lot of shots, 5 for 18, but he had 15 assists. Well, that's it. it it'll work that way, especially when Kevin goes off the way he did in the fourth quarter when he goes six for six, making shots in Kawhi Leonard's face time and time again against the two-time defensive player of the year. So I'm sure if you ask Kevin, you put him on a lie detector this morning, he would say, I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, like he, he would be more undecided than he's been about stay or go, no matter where he's going to choose to go. My gut feeling in the end is that he will go. But you and I have talked about this. Mm. If they get on a roll, they get hot, if they beat my Spurs, let, let's say, who knows, with or without Steph, what if they get to the finals? What if it's Kevin versus LeBron James yet again, the rematch? What if Kevin wins it? Would he stay? He might. I mean, he, he likes Oklahoma well, City. You know, he has, he, what, he has what a good I was time told, there. Go ahead. What I was told is that before the season began, when I mentioned L.A., um, and then in the yep. aftermath of that, I heard Miami, and then I heard he wasn't going to go home to Washington and whatever. Um, I heard that the only way he would stay in Oklahoma City is if he won the championship. Yep. I got Outside it. of that, but but obviously, uh, you know, I haven't talked to him. So because of that, I don't know for sure. So let's put that out there. That's number one. Number two, the I, I, being there Friday night reminded me of how great that crowd is. Yep. That's a fantastic home crowd. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. They really come to support that team. It was filled to the rafters, man, and they were hyped before this game, no question about it. And that's how they usually are in, in, to, as a credit sure. to them, that home crowd in Oklahoma City. So I want to take, give them props. But also, Skip, when you are as great as Kevin Durant, I'm here to tell you, most cities would be that way for you. Mm -hmm. Because he would bring those kind of moments, is all I'm trying to say. Sure. He would, if he was in the nation's capital, uh, the Verizon Center would be rocking. If he was in New York, Madison Square Garden would be rocking. OK, I mean, Miami's a little bit less because those folks, they got they, they got a lot of they got a lot of stuff to do. They OK, do. so they they're they going to be that way in the second half. But the first half, they might just still be getting to the game. So it might be a little bit different, but they're going to show up and they'll be there in the second half when it counts. But, you know, in, in most cities start to finish, you get Kevin Durant. Trust me, the crowd's going to be hype. And so because he's that lethal. And I think when you look at it from that perspective, again, I, I think he's at a stage right now, he's already been to the finals. He's already been against LeBron James. He's already lost. I think it's one of those situations where uh, Oklahoma City finds itself in a position, I think, I don't know, I think that the only way Kevin Durant will stay is if he wins the championship. If not, he'll either leave or sign a two-year deal with an opt-out after one year so he and Russell Westbrook can be uh, free agents at the same time next summer. Yep. I think those are the scenarios. I will say this. If by chance it comes to Kevin Durant versus LeBron James 2 in the finals, I will bet you Kevin Durant plays much bigger than he did the first time around. He just wasn't ready yet. He hadn't grown up enough. And he still, and he still averaged 30. He did. He did. And he still but, averaged 30. But he wasn't, but he wasn't there, there the when they moments. really needed him. Neither right. was James Harden, as you pointed out. Russell Westbrook had a couple of really bad turnover games. I, I think that team has grown enough. They would be different. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Yeah, Cleveland would win that series, though, in my opinion. The way that Cleveland is looking right yeah. now, 
uh, they, they would they would they would win that series unless OKC forced them to go big because having Channing Fry and Kevin Love with Steven Adams and Ibaka and those boys, the way they could get big and dominate the boards, uh, Cleveland it, it would be a matter of who forced who to play whichever whichever which, yeah. which other style. But I would give the edge to Cleveland well, in that I, series I again it, based I, on what I'm allow seeing. Allow me to say because my Spurs are a, a high percentage three point shooting team. They make a high percentage of threes. They don't take a lot. They were stifled last night shooting threes. Every catch and shoot opportunity Patty Mills or Danny Green got, they, they catch and tried to go up, hands are all in their face. So yeah. I, that would be interesting to see how they well got they some, could. They, they, they did get some open looks, though, Skip. They well, just missed couple. them. They got, they got a few. They got a few yeah. open looks that just missed them. Yeah. yeah. Also making history uh, this weekend, that would be Bryce Harper on Sunday without even swinging the bat. And someone here says it will hurt baseball. We'll get into that when we come back.